Okay, so you guys have been reaching out to me left and right about this lawsuit. Remax settling out for $55 million. They actually haven't settled out. They offered to settle out. It still hasn't been approved by the courts. And this comes after Anywhere actually did the same thing. They offered to settle out for $83.5 million on the same suit. So this is what we're going to talk about today, what my opinions are here. And I want to give you three things on this. I want to tell you what I believe is the best case scenario with this entire situation. I also want to give you what I feel like could be the worst case scenario and also how you can take advantage as a real estate agent either way it goes. All right. So let's dive in here. If you are not familiar, I'll do the, you know, really quick overview of the situation. This is the article right here showing that Remax is offered to settle out for $55 million for this. It's the broker commission lawsuit. Okay. And within this, uh, settlement, they're saying that they're going to change their business practices. We have no idea what these changes to their business practices are going to be. So that'll be something that kind of comes out later if this is approved and they start abiding by whatever it is. Okay. But basically in a nutshell, there are property owners out there. Okay. So get this, there are property owners out there who signed a listing agreement saying, Mr. Agent, I'm going to hire you for X percent, 5 percent, 6 percent, whatever it was. I'm going to hire you for this amount of money to go sell my house. And what did the agent do? They went out there and they got the property sold. The, the homeowner basically says, this is what I'm going to pay you. Do anything you want with that to get my property sold. Pay for advertising, you know, run ads, uh, you know, buy signage, do open houses, whatever you got to do with the money, do it right? Including paying for a buyer agent. Now, that, that, that this is the listing agent, actually, in essence, this is the listing agent paying for the buyer agent commission, not the seller. The seller already agreed to pay the four, five, or six percent. The listing agent at that point is taking money out of that percentage. The seller agreed to pay them and paying the buyer agent. It's not like the seller's paying this on top of what they agreed to pay the listing agent. And if the listing agent goes out there and sells it and represents the buyer, or finds the buyer their self, guess what? They get the four or five or six percent that the seller agreed to. So, you know, the, the, the owner agreed to paying this commission, right? Then they got the offer. They see right there. It's all clear, clear as day. I mean, on the listing agreement, it says we're going to do this for, say, five percent. And two and a half is going to go to the buyer agent if a buyer agent is involved. It says it right there in the listing agreement that they signed. Then they get an offer showing a, another agent is representing the buyer. Then they go to closing and they actually sign off on a HUD statement saying that this amount of commission is going to this brokerage. This amount of commission is going to that brokerage. But it's all out of the four, five or six percent that you agreed to, Mr. Seller. And now years later. Years later, these group of owners want to get together and get with some lawyers and say, hey, we feel like we're forced to pay that. Um, it's neat. It's it's to me, it's it's kind of out there. And I originally said, hey, there's no way this is going to make it to court. Well, guess what it is? It is going to court. And now we've got these big companies offering to settle out. Remax actually came out. Let me go back to the article here. They basically came out and said that the reason that they did this was to, you know, get out of the uncertainty of, you know, what a lawsuit could do to their company. You know, keep in mind, a lawsuit is actually for billions of dollars, it's like a total of like 45 billion, which, by the way, is more than all of these companies that are in the lawsuit combined. It's, it's the lawsuit is actually for more money then the companies that are getting sued are worth combined. That's what's crazy about this. Let's see. Uh, where is it here? So they agree to make certain changes to the business practices. Okay. Uh, this, this settlement paves a way for a clear path forward for the Remax brand and its franchisees and its agents, removing the uncertainty of ongoing litigation related to these cases. So that's that's the reason here is they don't believe that they're doing anything wrong, but for the sake of the uncertainty of this billions worth of lawsuit, they just want to get out of it. 
Okay, the other brokerages named are Keller Williams, Anywhere, Home Services of America, along with the National Association of Realtors, which the National Association of Realtors have come out and said that they are not going to settle out. They're going to take this all the way to court. They believe that keeping the pro-competitiveness uh, for you know agents, consumers, you know, gives uh, the buyers and sellers an advantage. And honestly, it does, right? Honestly, it does give them an advantage. Here's the advantage. When the seller agrees to pay X amount and the listing agent is able to advertise that to the world and allow any buyer who may or may not be able to afford their own buyer commission, the luxury of having representation, okay? Of having representation. Now, when you take the buyer agent commission out of that equation, then we're sitting here with only the buyers who can afford their own representation or buyers who go directly to the listing agent with no representation, which is just not a good thing. It's just, it's just not a good thing to not have your own representation. Uh, so it says here, you know, Anywhere, which is the parent company of Cochrane, Caldwell Banker, uh, Century 21, Sotheby's, agreed to pay $83.5 All right, $83.5 million. So let's talk about the best case scenario. Let's talk about the best case scenario, and then I'll get into the worst case scenario, which I think you really need to understand what the worst case scenario is here. And then we're going to talk about how to take advantage of this situation. So first off, this goes right in line with my training session this Friday. It's going to be from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern. And I'm going to challenge you to go out and get 30 more listings for the rest of the year. So there's three more months left in the year. So that's 10 listings per month. So this Friday, 4 to 6 Eastern, I want to lay out a plan for you to go out and execute over the next 90 days to go get 30 more listings. So there'll be a link in the description for that if you want to uh, participate uh, this Friday. Looking forward to seeing you there. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, now will be a fantastic time. The best case scenario here is that nothing changes. And I think this is the most likely scenario, in my opinion. I was wrong about this getting this far in the legal system. So I could also be wrong about this. But this is what I think at this point is the most likely scenario. We've already seen uh, MLSs, bright MLS. I believe there's a there's a couple there's several MLSs around the country that went from offering one dollar to where they made it mandatory actually that you had to at least offer one dollar or more for the buyer agent commission. They changed that from one dollar to zero dollars. And what did that do in the bright MLS to the area and these other areas and MLSs that did that? What did that do? Well, it didn't do anything. Um, I talked to agents in these other areas and they say nothing has changed at all. They're still getting their five or six percent. They're still, you know, advertising the same way, offering a buyer agent commission, and they're still doing business the same way that they are. I think that this is the most likely scenario. Why? Because we're accustomed to doing business like this. Um, and this is, again, what I'm referring to as the best case scenario is that everything just continues like it is. And, you know, it's always been negotiable anyway. It's not like it wasn't negotiable at all. I negotiate on every, every single deal, whether it's up front, whether it's in the middle of the deal or the day of closing. A lot of times I'll have to do something. Something's going on. I'll have to throw in here, throw in there, get the buyer. To, something's happening on every single deal. So it's all negotiable anyway. Always has been, always will be. But the best case scenario is, is that nothing changes. We continue to operate as normal, which I believe that's going to be the case. Okay, the worst case scenario, the worst case scenario is in fact that there are laws and different policy changes that we have to abide by, which in fact makes it mandatory that we disclose things in a certain way to the seller when we uh, when we list their property that basically brings uh, to light here and really shines a really bright light on the fact that, hey, you don't have to pay 
a buyer agent commission. You know, you don't you don't have to pay that. That doesn't have to come out of my money that I'm negotiating with you, you know, which I, I just feel like that that's silly to say, hey, the money you're giving me, you know, um, you you can you can decide what what I do with the money that you're giving me. It just doesn't make any sense. It's also going to, like I say, cut down on the representation for the buyers, which they need. But that's what it's going to do if, if the worst case does happen. Now, so if we have to disclose this to sellers in a certain way, you're going to have some sellers who say, you know what? I understand if I don't offer a buyer agent commission, I'm basically cutting the, the number of buyers down, way down. Uh, who want that representation, who are going to go after listings, who are offering buyer agent commission because they can't afford, they can't afford to pay their agent, A, and B, want representation. They're not going to go through the listing agent and be unrepresented. So that's going to cut cut in on the the buyer pool. And some sellers may say, you know what, I want every opportunity. We'll just add some to the price or whatever the case may be to to compensate here, to make sure that we are exposed to every single possible buyer because, you know, I want to sell this house. Why am I doing this? But there are going to be sellers who say, if I don't got to, I ain't going to, you know, let's try it. And in that case, again, worst case scenario, we're going to be, I believe, sitting in some situations where listing agent is getting 3%, something like that. And there's no buyer agent offered, no buyer agent commission offered. And then what's going to happen there? Well, you're going to have some buyers come to you that aren't represented that you're going to have to basically represent both sides for 3% in those scenarios. You're going to have some buyers come through in those scenarios who are represented and paying their own agent. I also believe that if this goes through, then I, be I believe that we'll see some mortgage products come out that actually will figure in the buyer agent commission into the loan. I believe that that's a strong possibility. You know, we see 40 year mortgages. We've seen, uh, you know, rate buy downs. We've seen, you know, some of these companies offer 1% down, uh, you know, loan products. You know, you can, <laughs> you can create other loan products. And I think we may be in a situation where we see some loan products that say, Hey, We'll figure the buyer agent commission into the loan. But then guess what? Now the property has to appraise for what that, you know, that that amount is, what that, what that ending purchase price is, what the buyer agent commission figured in. You know, that that's going to have to appraise for that. Maybe, maybe they come up with a product where it's more of closing costs is figured in or something. I don't know. Uh <laughs> these, these, you know, these mortgage people, they can come up with a lot of different things. But in my opinion, if that were to happen, it, it would have to appraise for, you know, the purchase price and the, the buyer agent commission that's figured in. And now we're right back to selling it for appraised value. OK, we're right back to selling it for appraised value. So, um, you know, and then we'll get into these situations, OK, where, oh, it didn't appraise. And then the seller saying, well, it appraises minus your buyer commission. So, you know, you need to pay your own buyer commission. The buyer's like, well, I don't have the money, so I can't do the deal. And now the seller's saying, well, well, now I got to go out and find somebody that's that that's either can pay their own commission or not represented. Like, it's just going to open up an entirely new world if this were to go down like this. So anyway, um, it's interesting to think about. Nothing to worry about. OK, so let's get into how to take advantage Okay, so best case scenario, nothing happens. Worst case scenario, everything gets flipped upside down of how we have to disclose to sellers. And then you have kind of this mixed market where we still have people that are offering buyer commission and some not. It's going to be wild. Buyer agents are actually going to turn into more lawyer type uh, situations where they take a retainer up front to go out and show property, um, you know, and, and a retainer and then get the rest at closing. And that's how they operate in Australia. Uh, I interviewed Lee down there and uh, he's actually the number one EXP international agent in the world, but that's how they operate in Australia. They, they operate exactly like this. Listening agent is 3% and normally works with the buyers on their deals. They do work with the buyer agent uh, on some that get paid by their own 
client, by the buyer. And then there are some deals he said where he gives them some of the 3%. So this is what we could run into. Now, if this change were to happen, it's going to take a long, long time, in my opinion, right? It could take, you know, several years for the dust to settle from something like this and to, to become the new norm, if you will. So it's going to be interesting to see. This is going to be very interesting to see, but again, nothing to worry about. So where's the opportunity? The opportunity is this. Number one, if something gets flipped, I, I mean, I'm having agents reach out to me about, you know, that obviously are buyer agents and they're asking me, hey, if this were to go down, I'm like, don't worry about it. Like, keep trucking, keep doing what you do. If something happens, we we work, we work around it and keep going. And they said, well, do you think that it's going to, we're going to lose buyers who can't afford to pay commission or whatever. And I'm thinking, I hope so. <laughs> I hope that, uh, I hope you lose some buyers and you start working with some sellers. I hope that you realize that working with sellers is more efficient anyway. And it's like work with the, not just seller, but property owner to buy and sell. So the opportunity is going to be here. If this were to happen, my in my opinion, it's going to scare a lot of agents out of the business. It's going to it's going to turn things around in a way, um, especially a lot of these teams that have a lot of buyer agents. Um, it's just going to change a lot of things. And I think we're going to see a lot of agents leave the business over this. Honestly, I think it's going to weed out a lot of agents. So I think you're going to have a lot of agents leave the business. That's going to be open up a lot more opportunity for the agents who stay in the business. Um, but also. If you are, if you are property owner heavy, if your business is more property owner heavy, and what you do is you go out there and you create relationships with property owners to help them buy and sell real estate for the rest of their life, you're going to be just fine because you're mostly a listing agent. You know, 80% plus of your deals are listings, which regardless of how this goes, will continue to be king moving forward. So you're going to be just fine if that's the case. So that's where the opportunity is, is to not leave the business. If you're a buyer agent, switch to more listing heavy, property owner heavy, start doing lead generation activities that involve going after property owners and building those relationships. And if you're already, uh, if you're already running that type of business, go even harder, <laughs> go even harder in on that. So a couple of things really quickly as far as being a, a property owner heavy uh, business, using social media to get listings, so on and so forth. So I'll, I'll put some training sessions in the, in, the, uh, in the description. Of course, again, I'm doing my training session live this Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern. I want you guys to go get 30 more listings for the rest of the year, and I want to lay out a plan for you to do so. But I'll put another one in the, in the description. Uh, expires, man, two to 18 month old expires are so good. Uh, these guys and girls uh, that, that you were trying to sell a property at one point, it's like, I see you were trying to sell this at one point, whatever happened with that. And they just tell you this amazing story of what happened. They still live there. They moved, they sold it, they rented it, whatever they did. Right. And then how they're doing now, what they're doing, what's their next move. When are they going to move next? Do they like rental properties? Do they have an agent they're going to work with? And if you can work with them, you would love the opportunity. Is it okay if I stay in touch and just build those relationships? It's not crazy. With social media, a lot of you are using social media to go after buyers. You're just running a lot of videos and stuff to try to attract buyers, which is fine. It's not efficient, in my opinion. If you're utilizing social media to leverage getting more listings, I feel like that that is the best play for real estate agents online. Now, how do you do that? Well, number one, you advertise your listings on your platforms. Make incredible videos about your listings, the drones and the different videos with the nice music. Maybe you talking about your, your listing, whatever the case may be. Um, but also creating just really engaging content on your page as well, just to boost the impressions that your profile gets per month, the views, the, the likes, the comments, everything else that comes along with engagement. You want to create that kind of content as well. Then what do you do you, when you're at a listing appointment? You say, hey, I, I'm getting 100,000 impressions on my profile per month and I'm going to be 
pushing your property on my platform. Okay. Any agent can put your property on MLS, right? Every agent can, but there's very few agents that are getting a hundred thousand impressions per month that are going to be pushing your property out on their platforms on top of all the other platforms. Every other agent is pushing your property on. I have my unique personal platform that gets 50,000, 10,000, a hundred thousand impressions per month. And I've sold X amount of properties, right? I'm also going to do a video for your listing on and on and on and on. This is how you use social media to go out and get more listings. All right. So anyway, I hope you got a lot out of this. I hope you understand what my position is. I'm excited either way because I'm always up for the challenge. If nothing changes, it's like game on. If things do change, it's like, okay, send me a list of the new rules so I can get to work because that's what exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to get out here and I'm going to crush every single agent. I say that in a good way because I love you guys, but I'm competitive and I'm going to go out here and I'm going to crush everybody. And that's exactly the way you need to be thinking because business is unlimited forever. You can never do all the deals. So go out there and put the, as forth as much effort as you can to take advantage of as much as you can because there will come a time, ladies and gentlemen, when you don't feel like doing this anymore. Being a real estate agent is a rat race. You're only good as your last deal. You're going to want to invest into passive income. Okay, uh, I'm closing on four properties this week. I've got two new constructions, an existing home we remodeled, and a commercial building. I also have three acres under contract. I'm having my second city meeting with to build 48 units, an apartment complex, two miles from my house. The, actually, all these properties are about two, in a two mile radius of my house. So they're also building a new school that's going to be nice, super nice, a high school, elementary, a new park and workout facility and everything minutes away from the beach. So I said all that to say this, you're going to come to a point where you don't want to sell anymore. Squeeze this market and this moment for every last drop oh, so, you can. Oh, wow. All right. I love you so much. Go out there and crush it. And I'll see you love. on the next video. Let's go. I 35 with a top down. Quit to tell a hater they should get like me. Like Seem like everybody want to be the boss, but it costs and these lames ain't like me. Drop a couple bands on the crib.